Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be doing kind of a things to be aware of for those of you that are looking at building your own gaming desktop. It doesn't necessarily have to be a gaming desktop, but just computer desktop in general, whether you're going to be running Windows or Linux or even try to build a Hackintosh. Just these are kind of my recommendations for what to look for when you're choosing your parts because a lot of people seem to think, oh, well, I'll just get the cheapest one or I'll just get the one that everyone else is getting. But I want to draw your attention to sort of the features that you may not necessarily use day one, but you may end up needing those features in the future. So just things to be aware of. So number one, the PCIe layout. So if you're going to put a really large graphics card in the top slot, for example, up here on this Gen 5 PCIe slot, Will you be able to still have enough space underneath the graphics card to utilize the remaining PCIe slots if you were going to make use of these in the future? Now, an example of what you might want to install in the secondary PCIe slots could be things like a 4K capture card or a 10 gigabit network card or maybe even a 40 gigabit network card depending on how many lanes are available on these lower slots here or USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 add-in cards. Those are another thing that people often overlook. The ability to run 40 gigabit USB-C over PCI tunneling, that's a very good feature to have. But a lot of the newer motherboards today include that as a standard feature, but you, that's something you wanna be looking out for if you're in the market for a new motherboard. Other things to be aware of, how many SSDs can you install on the motherboard without impacting or without taking lanes from your graphics card. A lot of people don't know that several motherboards, in particular Z790 motherboards, are kind of notorious for this, where if you install an SSD in the primary slot, so like underneath this giant heatsink, for example, if this was a Z790 motherboard, the graphics card would only get half of the bandwidth, so it would only get eight of the lanes because the Z790 chipset, in order to deliver Gen 5 as this, the as a feature, it has to take lanes from the GPU. So that's another thing to be aware of. It's like, can you enable as many features as possible without resorting to lane sharing? Now, lane sharing is not a terrible thing, but it is something to be aware of. So, for example, with this motherboard, this is the X670E Aorus Master. It can populate four SSDs, so one, two, three, and four without any lane sharing at all. And two of those SSDs are Gen 5 SSDs. The other two are Gen 4 SSDs. So that's just an example of what to be aware of when you're buying a motherboard because you may not need all four SSDs day one, but what about two years from now? What about three years from now? How long do you plan on keeping the computer? What's sort of the long-term upgradability that you get? Will this motherboard support future CPUs if you wanted to upgrade in three years or so? So that's another thing to, to be aware of. So this is an AM5 motherboard from 2022. So this motherboard is already three years old, but I can run something like a 9950X3D in here, no problem. So that's just another thing to be aware of. The other thing, just kind of the USB ports. Are you gonna plug in a whole bunch of peripherals, like a webcam, a USB microphone, you know, mouse, keyboard, etc., and the networking capability. Do you need 10 gigabit LAN? That's another thing to be aware of. So Wi-Fi, I mean, most people that are using desktops are probably gonna be using hardwire internet connectivity. So Wi-Fi, I think is, it's a nice to have, but it really depends on your use case. So those are kind of things that I take into consideration when I'm choosing a motherboard. SATA ports, we start seeing these become less and less in number over the years, just because M.2 NVMe storage is really taking over. I would like to see U.2 or U.3 show up in consumer desktop with the next generation. So that's another thing too, but that's more of like roadmap features. Other things that I'd recommend, the postcode debug. Postcode debugs are really, really good to have. You never know when you have to troubleshoot, you know, like a GPU related issue or something, memory related, whatever it may be. It is always good to have, they call it the seven segment display here because 
these number eights are actually seven little lights that make up the number eight. So the seven segment display panel is really nice to have. In fact, I don't actually re recommend any motherboard that doesn't have this just because this is invaluable and it's a lot more useful to see the error codes versus having to rely on random little LED lights and hope that you can figure out what the problem is if you run into a problem. So just always something to have. It's better to have that feature than to not have it when you actually need it. So uh, it's something that I would also recommend. And then finally, things like the heat sink capability of the motherboard. Yes, you can install, like if you're running a Gen 5 SSD or you plan on running Gen 5 SSDs, the ability to cool them adequately. A lot of motherboards come with heat sinks that are completely inadequate for Gen 5, although newer Gen 5 SSDs are running cooler. So that's another thing to take into account. Final things, these are nice to have. So things like a full backplate on the motherboard keeps you from tearing things up when you're trying to install it in the system. So a full backplate. Now this is gonna be more of a premium feature that you're gonna to have to p typically pay uh, quite a bit more for a motherboard that features this, unless you're buying an ASRock motherboard. Um, but typically if you want a backplate on the motherboard, which is a nice thing to have because it does help reinforce it, less flex um, over time. So it's a really good thing to have. Just another feature that I look for when I'm in the market for a new motherboard. But anyway, those were my sort of recommendations on what to be aware of when you're building your own PC. So hope you guys found this video useful, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.